Well, hi, everyone. Welcome to the Buffett and Beyond Weekly ETF Video Letter. This is Saturday, March 9th, 2024. And we're going to go over the semiconductor stocks today, along with several other ETFs that are performing very, very well. And folks, NVIDIA is up 81% this year alone, and we're only in the beginning of March. So let's take a look. And remember, if you want to live on this beach like Jimmy Buffett once did, you've got to learn how to invest even better than Warren Buffett does now. So let's get right into it, folks. So let's see what's been happening year to date. And this is the S&P 500. The black lines represent the S&P 500 from the end of December <laughs> right up until to, or yesterday, which was March 8th. So we're looking at this brown line here, and this is the semiconductor down here. This line all the way down here has been underperforming the S&P 500 all year long and has just now broken above the S&P 500 right in here. Now, this next line up outperformed the S&P 500 as it usually does year after year, but with a little bit more risk, and we'll go over that risk in, the, in a moment, it is the QQQs, which is the NASDAQ 100. Then up here, all of a sudden, this orange line, which is the housing industry, all of us, or home building industry, I should say, was underperforming the S&P 500, but now that interest rates are dropping, sales are picking up, building is going up, and therefore all the companies that are involved in the building and building materials outperform the S&P 500. And then the blue line is the XLK, which is the technology ETF, which is always a top performer. So with the S&P Perform, uh, returning about 8.2%. We're looking at the semiconductors, just about 8.2%, 8.3%. We'll see that in a minute. And then we have the QQQs up about 10%. And we're going to see the technology and the home builders up 12%. But folks, we're going to see, because we picked the top stocks in these areas, we're going to almost double in fact, we will be doubling what you see here, but you have to know how to pick the top stocks, which is what we're experts at. So let's go right to the home builders. And with the S&P 500 up 8.3%, the home builders are up 10.5%. And this is the ETF that we're talking about. So we're looking at the XHB, which is the ETF for the home builders. But if you had invested in our top stocks, and we have seven of them in this ETF, you would be up 15%. So folks, here you are up 15%, where the ETF itself is up 10%, and the S&P 500 is up 8%. Now remember, 96% of professional money managers out there, those are the people who manage the publicly traded mutual funds, 96% of them cannot outperform this number right in here over any 10-year period. So folks, this is what we're all about, outperforming that S&P 500. And this Home Builders ETF is outperforming, but we want to outperform the Home Builders ETF itself. And folks, we're doing it by 50%. So five percentage points above this 10.5%, 15% is actually 50% higher. Now let's go more. This is just the beginning. So let's go over technology and folks, the S&P is up 8.3% as we've seen through with these other slides. The technology ETF is up 8.7%, but our top stock, six stocks in this ETF up 20.5%. Folks, we are almost tripling or two and a half times the S&P 500 and almost two and a half times that of the ETF itself. So if you want to beat the ETF, if you want to beat the S&P 500, you've got to pick the best stocks in those areas. And that's what we do, folks. Now let's go to the semiconductor area. Well, the semiconductor is actually underperforming the S&P 500. And this was as of Friday morning the S&P up 8.3%, the semiconductor ETF is up 5.5%, but folks, the top stocks in our ETF, we have six of them, up 28.2%, and most of it is NVIDIA. Thank you, NVIDIA. Yeah, 
but still we're up at 28.2 percent folks we're up almost three and a half times that of the s p 500 we're up over five times the semiconductor ETF itself. So we're talking about some serious numbers here. And don't forget, it's only March. It's not even the middle of March yet. And we're up 28%. Now, what about the QQQs? This is one of our favorite ETFs, folks. And now we're bringing in a little bit about risk. So we can hedge these portfolios by buying an inverse ETF. I don't want to get too complicated, but we could buy something that when the ETF goes down, this particular inverse ETF goes up. That's why they call it inverse. So we, if we're hedged, let's say all the time, and we want to be hedged 30% of our portfolio, folks, that's taking a lot of risk. Well, 30% of the risk out of the QQQ. So we buy the inverse ETF which has lost us money because the ETF has gone up. So the ETF has gone up 8.5%. We've lost 6%. But folks, our top stocks are up 21%. So you take the 21% minus the 6 and you wind up with 16.4%. What I'm trying to get out here is that we can hedge the QQQs, the top stocks and the QQQs. Now the QQQs have in my memory, have always outperformed the S&P 500 just about almost every year that we've looked, or every up year for sure. So if we want to take the risk, some of the risk, or 30% of the risk, actually, out of our portfolio, we can hedge with an inverse ETF. So we can get, if we're hedged 30%, so 30% insured, is the is the word I'm looking for. We're up 16.4% with the S&P and the QQQs up a little bit over 8%. So we are doubling both the ETF, the QQQ, and we're doubling the S&P 500, and we're 30% hedge. We have taken 30% of the risk out of this portfolio. So we love this, folks, with the QQQs. Now, if we take the QQQs, our best stocks in the QQQs, if we take the best stocks in the technology ETF and the best stocks in the semiconductor ETF, we're returning 17.3%. This is a nice portfolio of about 18 stocks, folks. So it's a little bit more than the other ETF top stocks, but that gives us a little bit more security and a little bit more ability to sleep at night when the market goes down. So if we want to take these 18 stocks, so that's a, it's a little part of the QQQ, it's a little part of the semiconductors, a little part of the technology, and hedge it 30%, we're up 13%, folks. This is a nice, nice strategy. And the S&P is up 8.3%. And remember, most people cannot outperform the S&P 500. And there have been studies after studies after studies showing that people with individual portfolios, and there was one study done by Schwab, which said that the market was up 10.3% and the average individual portfolio was up only 3.3%. So individuals do not do very good managing their own money. And money managers over any 10-year period, 96% of them cannot outperform the S&P 500. And here we are outperforming the S&P 500 returning 13% if we were hedged 30%. If you don't want to be hedged, we're doubling the S&P 500 with a 17.3% return. So folks, you can hedge. You don't have to hedge. You can hedge 10%, 20%, 30%, or you don't have to hedge at all. We can show you how most times we can outperform the S&P 500 and the ETFs themselves. So folks, if you want to live on this beach, and there's a little horse, okay, it's a toy horse, but those are real waves behind them. Beautiful, beautiful picture of the sunrise, the horse there. If you want to walk on this beach like Jimmy Buffett used to once, used to do at one time, then you've got to learn how to invest better than Warren Buffett does now. And folks, we are doing just that. So folks, you go out this weekend, you have a good time, enjoy yourself, and folks, we'll see you back here on Monday.